Today we review one of the most requested vehicles in the history of the Wheels Boy channel, and yet one that we've taken uh, almost exactly three years to finally get around to. Sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Zeker 001. Gotta finish this video before this thunderstorm arrives. Wish me luck. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. We took so long to review the 001 that the car we're driving today is actually the mid-cycle refresh, complete with some serious upgrades, and thanks to greater competition, a lower price point. Here in China, you can get yourself behind the wheel of a 001 for about 37,500 to 45,500 US dollars before options. Are you the current owner of a 2021 Zeker and you want to upgrade to the all new 2024? Or maybe you want to export another interesting Chinese vehicle? Reach out to us via email at sales at wheelsboy.cn. We can connect you with a reliable exporter of Chinese cars. The fact that there's not a lot of exterior styling changes for this new generation offers me a unique opportunity. You see, in most cases, I don't have a lot of time to make up my mind about a design where I have to share my impressions with you, the audience. In the case of the 001, I've had three whole years of watching this thing drive around Shanghai on a daily basis. When I first saw the 001 at the 2021 Shanghai Auto Show, I was shocked by its mere existence. It was the Holy Grail, an electric wagon and I was in love. Okay, so it was actually the Lincoln Co Zero concept that they hastily rebadged at last minute because parent company Geely just can't help but create new brands, but who cares? As in most long-term relationships, the passion has faded, but the love is still there. Is the Zeker 001 a little bit too tall, a little bit too slab-sided to be the sleek wagon of my dreams? Yes. Has the Neo ET5T come along to steal a bit of its thunder in the meantime? Also yes, but this remains one of the few electric wagons you can buy, and that alone makes it very desirable to me. Before you ask, I don't mind the frog face. In fact, I quite love it. I don't even mind that it's grown a lump for this refreshed model as the 001 joins the growing ranks of Chinese vehicles with LiDAR units. The lump, by the way, is inoperable, meaning it's standard on all trim levels. Zeker tried to tell us this thing was a shooting brake when it debuted, but you can't fool me. That's four doors, not two. I'll give them this much. It definitely looks a lot cooler than your average wagon, thanks to that steeply raked roof line. Seems like somebody over at Zeker didn't get the memo, however, that wagons are supposed to be about practicality, and steeply raked roof lines do not lend themselves to creating expansive rear cargo areas. Zeker only quotes the cargo space for when the second row is laid down, 2,144 liters. Now, that's pretty impressive, but they do not tell you what it is when the seats are up. I imagine that's because they deemed that number unimpressive. Then again, have you seen the trunk on an ET5T? The lack of exterior styling changes on this car belies the fact that it's undergone major upgrades to every aspect of its powertrain. For starters, it's now on an 800 volt charging architecture instead of 400 volts. That ought to come in handy for the new 95 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack. According to Zeker, that battery pack can charge from 10 to 80% in just 12 minutes. If that's true, that makes it very nearly as fast as the Li Auto Mega. For the true range lovers, the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack is still available, and the motors have undergone their own upgrades, but we'll put a pin in that for now. It is my contention that the 001 is a legitimately premium vehicle, and nowhere is that clearer than here on the interior. These real leather seats are standard, as is the heating, ventilating, and massaging functions on those seats. The overall aesthetic is reserved provided that you don't get it in this seafoam green color. But apart from that, it doesn't come off as over-designed like so many Chinese vehicles. This car, being part of the Geely Group, has to have some cloth interior trim, which you can see here on the doors in this kind of fantastic, almost tartan pattern. It's really good and better than I've seen in a lot of other cars, mostly because it's reserved for places like this, not vital touch points where it will shred your skin like a cheese grater. I'm looking at you, Polestar 2. 
Undoubtedly, the biggest stylistic change on the interior of this car is here on the door, where they've done a much more simple design, which got rid of all of the metal and metal look trim pieces that were on the first generation car. That includes the physical door handle that used to be up here. Instead, you've got this button to operate the electrically operated automatic doors that are available on this car. I'm not sure that it looks more premium now than it did, but it's definitely more minimalist. Perhaps as a consolation, the Yamaha sound system has gone from 12 speakers to 28 speakers, and that's standard. The center screen on this generation could seem like a downgrade compared to the last gen because it goes from 15.4 to 15 inches, but the quality of the display is up. This is now 2.5K OLED powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8295 processor as opposed to the 8155 of the last generation. The instrument cluster also grows from 8.8 .8 inches to 13 inches, meaning it fills the entirety of the shroud and you don't have those big ugly black borders like last time. The HUD remains standard, but it's more than doubled in size. It's now 35.4 inches. The wireless charging pads, no longer 15 watts, now 60 watts. The next new feature for the 2024 model is of questionable use but undeniable cool factor, and that is the smart overhead glass. This, like other examples of smart overhead glass, can change its opacity based on how much sunlight it's receiving. You can set that to be automatic, or you can change it yourself manually. What I've never seen before, however, is the fact that it can display different patterns. This one's kind of a flowing water or wave pattern, and this one is supposed to be leaves. But beyond that, you can also manually select which section of the roof you want to be dark and which one you want to be light. Again, is this particularly useful? No, but it's really cool. I gotta get out of this wind. So, maybe the trunk on this thing isn't the biggest one I've ever seen in a wagon, but the rear seat might very well be. Check out all of that legroom. 3,005 millimeter wheelbase, so no surprise there. Headroom, however, Ooh, not especially impressive. Another downside of the very, very steeply raked roof. The seats, as with the last generation, are electronically adjustable when it comes to their, electrically adjustable, sorry, when it comes to their recline angle. Well, not a lot of adjustability, but every little bit helps on a long journey. The center screen down here, will you be surprised to learn that it's gotten bigger between the last generation and this one? Instead of 5.7 inches, it's six inches. This is where you can control your media as well as your standard heated second row seats and air conditioning. There is still both a single motor rear wheel drive and dual motor version of this vehicle available, but power levels are way up for 2024. The single motor now makes 310 kilowatts and 440 newton meters of torque. That's enough to knock a full second off the zero to 100 kilometer per hour, zero to 62 time, which is now 5.9. The dual motor version is even more ridiculous. It now makes 180 kilowatts more than the last generation for a total of 580 and 810 newton meters of torque. It can get you to 100 kilometers per hour in just 3.3 seconds. What I really like, however, is how Zika arranges the trim levels for their vehicles. You see, for that $37,500 US dollar starting price, you can pick between two different cars. One of them has the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in a single rear motor. That's how you get maximum range. That one's rated for 750 kilometers on the CLTC cycle. Or for the same price, again, you can pick a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack and a dual motor powertrain. That one obviously has more power. So essentially you can pick your priority, range or power. If you're the type of person that doesn't like to compromise on anything, you can pay 41,500 US dollars and get yourself a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and a dual motor powertrain. That has a range of 705 kilometers. If you pick that more expensive trim, you also get the air suspension, which is an added cost option on the entry level models. Or you can do what I've done, which is be a member of the automotive media, which gets you the 45,500 US dollar version, which has all the big battery and the dual motors and the air suspension, plus all of the other added cost options as standard. For years now, I've been hearing that the Zeker 001 is more than just a pretty face. 
assuming that, like me, you like the frog face. It's actually very good to drive. Sadly, for the past three years, my personal driving experience has been limited to a very brief but very pleasant dealership test drive back in 2021. Having spent a lot more time with the 2024 model, I can see what everybody's on about. This thing drives really well. The steering isn't going to tell you very much about what's happening with the tires or the road surface, but it is very accurate. The brake pedal is firm, and the body control is quite impressive, actually, for a 2.3-ton electric wagon. And don't even get me started on the speed. Some cars glide to 100 kilometers per hour. The Zegra 001 is not one of those cars. Its acceleration is absolutely savage. Just like I said with the interior design of this car, the driving experience feels premium. It feels solid. It does not feel, honestly, like a $45,000 car. One quirk. If you get a dual motor powertrain, this thing comes with a bunch of different driving modes. Some you'd expect, like eco, comfort, and sport. Some you probably wouldn't, like snow, sand, and off-road. Yes, off-road in your 2.3-ton electric wagon. I shouldn't laugh, though. Because if you also get the air ride suspension, this thing has a maximum ground clearance of 193 millimeters. That's more than a Honda CRV. It's also rated to climb a 70% grade. A Hummer H2 was only rated for a 60% grade. That LiDAR unit, by the way, is part of their driver assistance system, which obviously includes a bunch of different safety features like automatic emergency braking, as well as driver assistance, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, so on and so forth. If you want their most advanced driver assistance system, however, you have to pop for the Zeker AD package. That is an option and not standard on every single trim level. What does that include? It includes Navigation Zeker Pilot. Terrible name, but what it is, is their Highway Navigation on Autopilot system. Apparently, it's currently available in 60 Chinese cities and will be available in 90% of Chinese cities by second quarter of 2024. Our car doesn't really seem to have the option, so I'm not going to be able to tell you very much about it. You'll have to wait for a later review of maybe another Zeker model. I've been wanting to drive the Zeker 001 since the day I saw it at the 2021 Shanghai Auto Show. That's three full years of anticipation building up. With that kind of buildup, it could very well have turned into a big disappointment. Thankfully, and I don't know how you feel, I am not disappointed by the 001 at all. This is exactly what I wanted it to be, an electric wagon that looks, feels, and drives great.